There we go. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear us just fine. Uh, it's Jeremy Ward here, curator at the Canadian Canoe Museum, joining the assembly uh, by recorded video, unfortunately. We'd love to be there, but just can't make the time uh, this particular summer. Things are very busy and we're working hard to uh, bring you a new canoe museum for your next visit. Um, I'm also joined, of course, by uh, our executive director, Carolyn. Hi there, everybody. Carolyn here, happy to be with you excited that you're gathering um, this year and I'm hoping that this slide deck gives you a good sense of the adventures and the journeys the Canoe Museum has been on since we brought you an update. We believe, I think it was last June that we brought an update to your group. So this is a, a pretty big update since then. Um, why don't we get started here? Um, so last June, when we were in front of you last, um, we had just chosen our new site. We were in the process of validating the project and putting together a pretty stellar uh, team to do the build of this new museum. And this is a shot of that site that we have purchased. This incredible property is a five acre waterfront this uh, waterfront home on Little Lake. And you can see here in this slide, our current property is here. Many of you have been and you know it well. Um, landlocked, parking lot, lots of gravel and dust. <laughs> and imagine yourself traveling, what is it, Jeremy? Three kilometers sort of to the Northeast. Yeah, if you, paddle, if you paddle the last stretch and you don't have to take the roads, it's about three kilometers. So, over here on the Trent Severn waterway on a, um, a little lake called Little Lake, which we have purchased a property on the east side of the lake. Um, and this is, you can see it here, oriented north-south. So to the north, we've got the Parks Canada, Trent Severn waterway property. To the south, Beavermead Park and Campground. And this is Ashburnham Drive on the right for those that might know the area. And this five acre property is perfect for the Canoe Museum. It is completely gonna transform the offerings at the Canadian Canoe Museum from what, you're experience, what you can experience today. A few things I wanna highlight for you that you will not have seen as of yet um, is that we have an incredible donor to the project that is bringing to life a uh, reimagined waterfront so we are introducing two sets of docks, one on the creek side here under my cursor. This is for all of our big canoes. So um, our Montreal canoe and Voyager canoes. This is a really accessible way for people to get onto the lake and experience canoeing in a fairly safe and controlled environment with a canoe museum staff or volunteer in the stern, as you can imagine. On the western side, on the western point here, is a tea dock, and this tea dock is really imagined to be for um, supporting all of our camp programming, anything tandem canoe or, or kayak. And this docking system also features an accessible canoe and kayak launch. So those who need assistance to get in or out of their canoe and kayak can do so safely within the docking program. And then other neat thing is this whole ramp down from the top of bank um, down to the, the main tee dock is all being designed so that it's, it's meeting the right kind of ramping angle so people can move down um, in a chair or or at a really awesome slope so that they're they're safely doing so we're actually also creating a boardwalk um, that is going to again create a level surface for those who might want to wheel themselves from the trans canada trail out to the docks to again to experience the full potential of this property in this museum um, on a on a beautiful boardwalk so that is transformative for the programming at the Canoe Museum. The Trans Canada Trail, um, this is this gray trail running north south through the property. This is also being used, this is a huge outdoor recreation trail, of course, and uh, tens of thousands of people are traveling through this. 
trail on a regular basis. So we're instantly exposed to all these, um, these outdoor enthusiasts. And the cool thing, thank you, Jeremy, about the trail is that we're making sure that there's connectivity between the Trans Canada Trail and Ashburnham Drive and the Canoe Museum itself. So again, just making sure that this is really um, bike and pedestrian friendly as an area. A few other features, this, this yellow box, the square here is our canoe house. So we need a bow house to support all of our outdoor and experiential paddling program. It's gonna all be based out of this, this little hub. Um, we have a constructed wetland because water management stewardship is a huge component of the values of the organization and is essential for us to properly care for this property going forward. So we're building in a wetland as a stormwater management feature and also a huge teaching area in terms of the kinds of plants and, um, and critters that you're going to find in the, in the wetland. Just to the east of the wetland is a campfire rink because it's the Kenny Museum. We need to have a campfire. And this campfire area will be used by summer camp programming, paddling camps, um, visitors, story time, uh, as well as our artisan programs where you're going to learn how to cook over the canoe, or sorry, cook over the fire mm -hmm. and get prepped for your canoe trip. Um, uh, let's see, I'm looking at the east side of the building where you're going to see a, our, our pretty modest parking. Um, a lot of the parking is imagined to be across Ashburnham. We have a, there's a huge municipal um, parking lot to the east of Ashburnham here, and that's where the majority of the parking is going to take place. We're actually building a signalized crosswalk so that you can safely move across the road to come into the Kinney Museum. And then, of course, there's ample drop-off, um, accessible parking, and short-term parking as well at, at the east side of the museum. Just, just Jeremy, what have I forgotten? Well, well just, just what my, uh, folks may want to uh, know that the, the, this side of the lake is mostly parkland, uh, which is a perfect setting for the Canoe Museum because we're busy, we're noisy, we're a little bit messy. Um, and uh, it, of course, has this great shoreline, natural shoreline. Just to the south of our site is um, a huge park with campgrounds uh, for both caravan and tent sites, uh, which offers a really enhanced offering for us to host uh, extended workshops, for instance, or even, and we may touch on this a little bit later for those uh, coming up for assembly uh, as an alternative. Uh, anyhow, uh, th that's one amenity that really is a, an amazing transformer to allow us to give extended offerings to the programs that we do. Yeah, and uh, I'll just add one other thing. Those that are arriving by powerboat, so maybe you're not um, under paddle power, but you're on a uh, powerboat um, and you're moving through the Trent Severn waterway system, there is docking for motorboats at the actual, the reach of the canal. So, and this is, I mean, it's like 250 meters from the museum. It's not far at all. And this, um, this is where the majority of, of the, the big boat docking is going to be. We're going to keep our, our facility pretty much um, safe and accessible for kids and new paddlers and canoe and kayaks as well. So there's awesome accessibility. And of course, there's a marina across the lake for those that are staying over um, for multiple evenings if you're not in the campground. The and the most important question I'm sure you're asking is, uh, are there canoe racks for our guests? Because I won't mm -hmm. be arriving in, in a powerboat. We're about an hour and a half, I think, paddle from Trent University down the system through the left lock. Might be a bit longer. It's been a while since I've done it. Um, but yes, of course, we will have canoe racks uh, available for, uh, for visiting paddlers who want to visit the canoe, but canoe museum by canoe. Of course, it is. <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> there we go. And here we are. So we started construction in October. Um, this was taken about two weeks ago. And so this is a shot of the, the site as it looks today. You can see that some of the slab on grade has been poured at the southern end, at the pointy end of, of the property. Um, we've got two significant stair towers that are going up, including this one at the south end has the elevator shaft in it. 
perimeter walls are almost complete. Um, we've had another significant slab pour since this photo was taken, moving all the way up to the collection hall line, which is just under my cursor. In the background, you'll see a gravel pad just near the trail that's been leveled and is prepped for the canoe house to begin construction. Um, and the really exciting component of all of this is that within the next month, the steel and the timber are going to be erected and we're going to start to see this building moving vertical more than it is right now. Um, I love looking at this photo because in the background you can see the incredible view that we have from the site. Um, you're looking across the lake at a naturalized shoreline um, where the, the main little lake cemetery is and then Further across is the major water fountain on Little Lake, and then the downtown core. So if you are looking to do go out for dinner after your visit to the Canoe Museum, you can push off from the docks, paddle across the lake, park up at the Silver Bean or Millennium Park and go into the downtown core for a nice dinner. So as over the course of the next couple of months, we'll be sharing a lot of our photos through our member newsletter and our volunteer newsletter. And um, if you're not already a member, you should be, and then you'll be able to get the updates. And now this picture probably makes a little bit more sense for those of you that can do that with their mind. And this is the building that we're building. And in just Oh, under a year's time, this is what you will see on our property. And we actually have a architectural fly through of the building. This is, um, this is a model that the project team is using to check for clashes and, and um, conflicts within the design. And so it's a rough, um, a rough model of what the building is going to look like. Not all the colors are perfect, but it gives you a really great sense of the scale and the size and the different spaces within the museum. And we thought you folks might appreciate having um, an insider's peek at the at the new Canadian Canoe Museum. So Jeremy is going to take us inside the building so that you can start to see what the spaces look like. Here we go. There we go. Moving. Yep. Yeah, we're moving. Good. Well, here we are walking up from Ashburnham. You can see behind that oak tree on the left uh, that the lake, uh, more or less. Hey, this is the gathering circle uh, and rain garden in the foreground here, um, here on the eastern side of the building. <clears throat> and oh, that's pretty slow. Yeah, it's not too jerky. It's as good. Uh, the gathering circle that we're looking at is being reimagined as something much more basically right now. This is uh, just rendered up as a footprint, but it'll be itself quite a moment. And you can see here at the south end, this sort of reveal, the architects have really taken cues off of the collection from different angles to inspire the shape of the building. Uh, and the main entrance, of course, with the crosswalk to our right is featured here. Um, You'll notice on the on the face of the building that the Canoe Museum's name now is rendered in three languages. And this is consistent throughout the entire campus where all signage and wayfinding is in English, French, as it always has been, but also in uh, Michisagig dialect of Anishinaabemowin, Jiman Kinomagiwin, which means canoe learning place uh, in a rough translation as told to us by elders from Curve Lake, uh, Mani Taylor, thank you, Mani. Uh, and uh, she's been working uh, on all of the language to describe the various uh, destinations within the center. Should be noted that uh, when we took possession of the site and began clearing for construction, uh, as everywhere, uh, all of the white ash trees, and it was most of the tree canopy on the property was white ash, were dead and dying. And so we're finding really imaginative uses for white ash logs that we've now had milled and are drying since last year uh, and that'll be worked into the program um, here but we've been trying to bring in as much as possible the natural palette um, to inspire mm -hmm. visitors uh, with the I guess the mission and the world of the canoe as uh, I don't need to tell you this as we as we as we know it and so there's been a lot of effort to bring rich texture and warmth into the space 
For size of scale, that's a 36 foot birch bark canoe hanging over the reception desk on the right. So it's a big space. All of the structure in this end of the building is uh, mass timber. This is uh, uh, Western Douglas fir, uh, and both in the structural columns and in the cross laminated timber panels that you see uh, behind the timbers. Reception desk on the right, just afterwards here, and we'll get another view of it uh, shortly, is a new offering for the Canoe Museum, which is going to be Ooh. the swingingest cafe. Uh, there is no food offering. Uh, really, other than more or less a chip truck on this side of the lake. And so we have an opportunity to, again, um, serve guests who are just visiting the museum uh, for its, uh, its ground floor amenities or also taking in exhibits and programs. As we are, we're passing or just about to uh, a working fireplace uh, right Yay. here. This is a, uh, this is a, a fireplace insert. Uh, in a stone hearth with the original sign of the museum, the Kanawha Museum, where this remarkable collection began as a first, first gathering of amazing canoes and kayaks from across Canada, North America, and indeed around the world. So it's sort of a humble beginnings mounted on the wall to remind all where this, this idea and this collection first had its beginnings. If you look upstairs, actually, you'll just see I got a black screen. Oh, it just paused. I can see it now. If you can see upstairs uh, uh, on the second floor. Oh, we just jumped ahead. Uh, I was pointing out there are more canoes hanging everywhere you look in this building. Here again is a great cafe. <clears throat> it's summertime outside in this rendering, of course. So uh, this is a great spot where you can also come in and get a, a ice cream cone as well as a good coffee. Uh, also beer and wine. This is fully licensed. Mm -hmm and uh, great opportunities for the museum to provide uh, canoe picnic lunches and uh, you know wraps mm. and scones and muffins and all of that. Now we've mentioned before um, the artisan spaces of the Canoe Museum. This has always been paramount for this organization to create maker spaces in it. We're just passing it on our left here, but we're gonna drop into that in a moment. We just wanna take you down past the stairs to this second floor. On the left, this, these pigeonholes are actually the main donor wall. So this is just a simple rendering of what is now looking actually quite amazing of all of the champions who have helped us bring together this uh, incredible project through this remarkable pivot uh, and make this happen. So as we mentioned last time, paramount for the museum is that the entire collection is contained within the envelope. It's not stored out in a barn by the warehouse or by the airport or anywhere else off site and that we can account for it in good times and bad. And so we've created a 20,000 square foot envelope on the ground floor with a, an accessible collection hall. Uh, everything here is on steel cradles. So we'll talk about that shortly, um, but they, so the canoes are not sitting directly on the cantilevered racking here. And as you can see, looks like we've selected only the orange canoes in our collection to, to begin installing, which I don't think we have that many orange canoes uh, at all. I think I can only count about five. Uh, anyhow, I think that's what the architects went with when they were helping do this rendering. But amazing to think that this space actually houses about 550 canoes with room for growth. And amazingly enough, it also has been designed around the performance of a singular forklift uh, those who are interested, it's called a four direction long load forklift, uh, combi lift, Raymond make uh, two couple companies that make these and it allows us to work in narrow aisles with very long objects, which is really the world of compact mm -hmm. storage with with watercraft and ensuring that we can provide care for for all of the canoes here on property. Carolyn, it's always been a mantra of yours that we need to design a new museum that we can care for in the good and the bad and having off-site storage was just never attractive to us uh, in events like, oh, I don't know, a global pandemic when uh, we have to close our doors, shutter and, and cut down all inter, uh, incoming revenue at the time. Stepping into one of the most amazing spaces here, this is a canoe and, and kayak artisan and studio. Um, this is a great space to host visitors, uh, canoe builders and residents, teach workshops, have short workshop clinics or extended uh, canoe building programs. These black boxes in the adjacent suite are not boxes, of course. These are table saws, thickness planers, drum sanders, jointers, uh, drill presses, you name it, router tables. And then all of the hand tools kept in the under, under mezzanine storage. And above, actually, we're not going to get to see there, is a lumber storage room uh, with a, 
a, a shelf that we can uh, lower long boards down to be milled down into gunnels or planking and so on and so forth. But uh, bringing this space right up forward, right up front meant that workshops um, both are a front center presence at the new museum. You'll smell the steam boxes when we're ribbing a mold when you step into the new canoe museum. But on the other side behind us is a garage door that lets out onto the grounds so that we can drag our, our halls outside to be sanded down before, uh, before varnishing and so on and so forth. So it just really makes uh, canoe building that much more operational and friendly and easy for the whole range of programming. Um, just before we go up the stairs, of course, we have a great, always had a great uh, retail offering here. And this is the, uh, the new Canoe Museum's store. Great location for it, of course, not far from the entrance and exit. And, uh, but it's, it's a perfect place for this. Now, I have to say, uh, Carolyn and I have always been impressed working with our amazing architects. These are let, let studio oh, and working with a pretty lean program and budget that we have been as we've pivoted from one project to another in a global pandemic. They've really found moments uh, wherever they can uh, and, and stayed, stayed more or less within the parameters of what we can do, but always stretching the boundaries. And if you're able to take the stairs, because there is also, of course, an elevator, um, you managed to get this second peekaboo into the incredible collection hall again, which uh, is, is just a stunning, stunning view. I know that we had an amazing visit back there back in 2017 altogether doing a walkabout and, uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, we look forward to hosting you in this space again, not far from now, I hope. Not far. Mm -mm. Some of the accessibility features in the museum that are worth noting, one here is on your right hand side, in a large atrium space that we have, it's really important that when anybody walks into the building that they're not overwhelmed from a sensory point of view um, and that we can contain sounds. And, um, and so these pan out this entire volume, the stair volume to the right here is a wooden felt treatment. And we've got that throughout. So not only does it bring the warmth of wood into the mix, but it also acts as a, as a sound buffering, which is again, contributing to making sure that this is a, a universal space where everybody is, is welcome and, and they can find themselves in this museum. As we get to the top of the stairs, thanks for that, Carolyn. Uh, I want you to just notice this red canoe that's hanging. And if you, in a second, be able to see a boom hoist above it. Reminding you that we're working with large artifacts in a museum that's built on two stories. And so we built in uh, to the organization, to the facility, a lifting boom because the collection storage is on the ground floor and the exhibition hall is on the second floor. These are the two largest volumes in the building. And so the canoe won't be just having a, a we won't just put a hook through the canoe. Of course, it'll be lifted on a, on a cradle with that, but that's a two ton hoist that swings out. And so after hours, the whole atrium area then becomes a canoe elevator space where we can lift canoes over 45 feet long from uh, ground floor to second floor quite easily and bring them into this incredible space, which is our 20,000 square foot exhibition hall. There is indeed a roof on this space, so the ceiling will be black. And this, this rendering just shows everything black because this was lifted from our exhibit design files, not through the architectural rendering. It seems to have paused here, but uh, this is, um, we're gonna take another look at this space. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful configuration. Mm. Oh, Jeremy, it really jumped. It did too. Take a stab mm -hmm. at finding our spot. I'm gonna say there. Oh, let's go in here. We moved into the exhibition hall. Just let it run. Yeah. Okay. Let's be in here for a sec. Also on the right uh, behind this black wall is a temporary exhibit space. And this will be a place that we renew every year. Uh, the first iteration in this area is an opportunity to document the journey of this uh, new museum, uh, not only in the last year, year and a half, two years, and the construction of this new home and the people who have helped us build it, but in fact, the journey of this museum over three chapters of its life, beginning once mm -hmm. in a summer camp and then latterly at a uh, out retired outboard motor factory. And then now here at the water's edge on Little Lake. All right, Carolyn, why don't you take us into the, uh, the multi-purpose room? 
Oh, I'd love to. So this is a space that is serving a, a couple of different needs. This is supporting the community. And so this is an area that will be rented by the Canoe Museum to external parties for weddings, conferences, business meetings, um, other not-for-profit charitable organization galas. But it's also a space that we are using for our school programs. So where groups are doing their messy making, uh, whether that be soapstone carving or mini paddles. And we wanted to make sure that there was, again, a connectivity to the outside. So that if you're in the space, you are also surrounded by wood. You saw some canoes and kayak frames in the ceiling. But you can hop outside on this gorgeous 800 square foot terrace and view out over the lake and get a sense of the programming going on down there. We've also planned for a staircase off the terrace. So if I'm running a summer camp program and I want to get the kids down to the water really quick, I'm going to pack up all their bags here they've got their backpacks ready to go and they're going to head out the stairs rather than going through the main museum this is going to be a top notch event space um, lots of excellent sound good lights um, um, projection great as a theater um, but also really super for dinner events there's a supporting kitchen next door and and it's been designed with catering with a, as a, with with caterers in mind Oh, this is a beautiful spot, Jeremy. There go. we go. Yeah, here we are coming into the Library and Archives Research and Knowledge Center. This is a beautiful space. Okay, but we're back into the wood structured building here. So you can see mass timber and cross laminated timber panels, millwork of all the shelving on the walls here, and two rooms, one on the left, one on the right here. Uh, on the left is a recording studio and meeting room where we can sit and do audio recordings in an acoustically isolated space. And on the right is a um, essentially a room with compact storage for all of the archival materials, the film, photographs, uh, written records, documents, and so on, where we can um, pack as much material in there as we can, make it accessible to researchers. Right now we're in the admin area. So this is for staff and volunteers um, as a workspace, a meeting space, um, uh, an area where we'll have small board meetings um, it's also a hangout zone for any sort of work and small meetings. And then there are cell smaller cellular offices down the hall here. Um, so this is, this is essentially back of house, but it's a really neat back of house that we'll be able to share with the volunteers that are supporting all the extra, all the activities at the Canoe Museum, summer interns, summer students, um, this is an, an area where sort of like the nerve center of uh, of the Kitty Museum. Every square inch. It'll never it. be this clean. No. <laughs> <laughs> and every every inch in this building has been uh, designed to have at least two functions. There's also a, a, the printer room is also where we print all of the text panels for future mm -hmm. exhibits and so on. As we as we do, we've always made our own exhibits. And so uh, that's sort of where that has been packed in. Uh, so everything needs to be versatile enough to uh, to earn its keep in this fairly modest uh, program. It seems generous right now, but uh, it, it it has been shaved and shaved, and it's it's a lean design, but uh, we feel really good about it. Really maximized the usable spaces, minimized all of the um, all of the circulation spaces. So again, they're sort of doing double duty everywhere we possibly can. The previous project at the lift block was about 90,000 square feet, and this is down to 65. And the really neat thing to note is that I think we are better off in terms of all of our program spaces in this building than we are before. We have full collection on site with space to grow, full education multi purpose room. We have the right number of storage for offices, we have a full archive and, li and library. Um, we've got excellent spaces and um, more than we need for artisan and canoe building and these glorious connectivity areas like the upstairs here, which we're just about to see that connection between like the exhibit hall and oh, I'm frozen again. Mm. Am I frozen? Yeah, it's frozen mm. again. I think all we are about to do is jump over the hand railing and land back. Yeah, we're going to go so. jump over the hand railing. <laughs> so, uh, so. <laughs> <clears throat> we can uh, probably just move on. I think just one thing that we may also want to mention too, uh, while we had passed through it, the multi-purpose room uh, with a seated audience in conference setting, you'll be interested to know 
and it can accommodate 190 um, in, in, in conference or auditorium seated with a, uh, a projector screen, of course, and podium. And I, I believe 160 uh, at banquet table. Right. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Can you imagine the cocktail receptions out on the terrace? Mm. Be awesome. Yeah. Well, there we go. Very good. All right. I want to take a moment just to step back into the exhibition hall. Uh, this is a, a really wonderful place. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see just as we have done with the rest of the campus and the building, all of the primary panels are in three languages uh, with this uh, exhibit. Uh, this is or this this uh, this this new suite of exhibits. So again, in Michisagi dialect of Anishinaabemo, and but a lot of attention has been given to bringing voice and perspectives of people of all backgrounds uh, in this, this these exhibit zones, um, and uh, among the many indigenous languages that you will see and hear. Uh, certainly, you'll be hearing Inuktitut and Haida, Nuchalnuth, uh, Mi'kmaq, and, and uh, many others uh, in this space as well. And uh, we've given a lot of care to bring first person voice uh, into the stories that are shared in this place. It's, uh, it's going to be a very fresh take on, on a, a, I guess, an idea that's familiar to everybody here at the, uh, at the assembly. Um, and in terms of the watercraft represented, there's been very uh, a lot of care given to reflect a balance, a parody of Indigenous and non-Indigenous uh, stories, perspectives, and watercraft in this space. All museums, uh, certainly those that care for objects uh, that uh, came from Indigenous communities and, and families, are on a journey, I guess, uh, uh, something of an existential journey now, and an important one, um, to understand how how they can better serve the larger community. And we've really intentionally uh, been compelled and motivated to create space for people to share their own perspectives and stories through the community museum to a wider audience. If we can use this opportunity as a portal, that is, uh, that is our goal. So let's just fly above the whole exhibition hall here and we'll take a look at what, um, what you can imagine if we were to lift the roof off, uh, mm. this is uh, 20,000 square feet, as I said, um, explored through six long-term or permanent ex exhibits. Uh, permanent meaning 10, maybe 15 years. Uh, and in the upper right is a temporary exhibit uh, where I mentioned we're exploring the, the remarkable journey of the Canoe Museum over the last 65 years or thereabouts. If you recall in last year's presentation, I did a deeper dive walkabout through the exhibit um, structure of the, the six permanent zones. So I think we'll take a pass on that. There's uh, we're just with the update that we're completing detailed design, uh, which is a really exciting uh, point, point in the game because we'll soon be into fabrication. And uh, we're meeting with steel uh, fabricators and audio visual de uh, designers, a lighting designer millwork, uh, all of the, the bits and pieces that get worked into this, all of the, te the text panels and, and graphic design that gets into, the, into a place like this, working with trades that'll suspend the canoes and rebuild that 19th century Hudson Bay Company for a trade mm. post. Because all of this work, you saw what our building looks like. It doesn't look like much that's in three dimensions when Carolyn showed the drone shot. We start moving the exhibits into this, this place in just uh, in just under six months. Astonishing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of big work is happening in the background. And I know that uh, those of you who joined us in 2017 or at other times to uh, see us, we uh, had the opportunity to do a walkabout in the current collection storage here at a former outboard motor factory. Uh, this is a 30,000 square foot hall. So we're reduced in footprint by about 20,000. Now to get ready for a move like this, uh, we've been quite long now, over a year, working at, at preparing the collection for move, starting with watercraft, um, the steps of, of work that need to happen for each and every vessel in the museum's collection that's moving is a complete cleaning, uh, some conservation uh, work, stabilization if needed, then um, photo photography and cataloging. Uh, and then, uh, then they get encapsulated. Essentially, they get a plastic bag that is a long tube, polytarp tube that gets pulled over the canoe and tied off and then tagged. 
not only with its accession or its tracking number, but also the, its future destination in the new home. Mm -hmm. And then the last step that each canoe that is going into storage uh, will receive or is beginning to receive now is that it's fitted with a cradle. And this is a, a, a new version of a, an idea we've been doing for some time. This is a completely modular system that we've developed with some of our design partners uh, and being fabricated locally here in Peterborough. These components all bolt together uh, very quickly and we're relying uh, on, in almost all cases, a strap system to provide cradling. We can add more straps as needed, more uprights, the heads swivel so they accommodate the taper of the hull. We're minimizing point loads on some of the more fragile hulls, of course, and we're providing enough support for some of the heavier ones because some of these canoes may weigh 45 pounds and others may weigh uh, upwards of a thousand. And, uh, but this then allows us to use a forklift to pick up the canoe without making contact with the canoe to have it protected on all sides and placed on a cantilevered rack. You may wonder why all the fuss, these are only canoes, we just put them on sawhorses. <laughs> Uh, well, the real reason, I mean, these are uh, considered <laughs> artifacts and we care for these deeply, but it also lets us use uh, hydraulic equipment and, and lift and lower. And again, going back to that guiding principle of having the entire collection within one envelope, uh, we had to use uh, this. So when you step into this new uh, compact storage, or sorry, this new storage hall, there are 10 rows of racking 200 feet long with five to seven rows on either side, creating five aisles to walk down. We'll be giving guided tours down here and this is what you'll see. Pretty extraordinary. Well, where are we at too? We're over 400 canoes uh, prepped oh, yeah. and ready to go. All of the small artifacts are prepped and ready to travel. So are the uh, archives and most of the library. Thank you to some amazing volunteers and staff who've been working in the background on that. And uh, we've been delighted to have worked with a few interns, well, many interns over the years that from the Museum Studies program here in Peterborough at the Sanford Fleming Museum Management Program. And we've been able to recently hire two interns full-time to help us see this move, which has been absolutely amazing. It's great, 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 uh, great guys working on the case. Excellent. And keeping this Very going. excellent. Right. So all of this is uh, taking place with an incredible amount of support from a number of government partners. So all four levels of government are supporting this project. Um, and we've had exceptional support from some leading foundations, corporations and private individuals from across the country. This is a national campaign and um, we are raising $40 million to make this vision come to reality. And as Jeremy has said a few times, raising these funds in a pandemic, um, while we are going through opening and closures at our current museum, and right now dealing with a really hot construction market that is full of supply chain and material escalation challenges. So these are tricky times for the Canoe Museum, but I am, perpetually impressed by the level of support that we are receiving from our local community, from the province, from across the country, and as well as internationally. And so we're at a stage and in the campaign where we have effectively, we're slowly moving from a leadership focused campaign at the major gift level um, you know, the $100,000 and above level to a public phase where we are asking all of our communities that love this place and support it and want to see it open with the kind of programming we're imagining and the kind of, you know, the vision of this building. We need our public, um, our community groups to do whatever they can to contribute to this campaign. And so our ask of yourselves is if you have a dollar, if you have $5, if you have 50, whatever the denomination, um, we are looking for a groundswell of support to make this happen. And I'm really hoping that we're at a stage right now that people see that within the next year, this is going to be open. And there is no, it's not too early and it's not too late. And so we'd love to 
see our WCHA community coming out in a groundswell to support this project. And so we put together a, a video, I think that is articulating the Move the Collection campaign, which is, um, and, and honestly, we developed this campaign idea with you folks in mind, because this is exactly the kind of thing that I think all of us would get behind. Let's move the collection. Let's pick a canoe and we're going to provide some financial support to the canoe museum to make this canoe go from one home to another home. And it's a much better home than what we've got today. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure dealing with leaking roofs and broken windows and starlings so um i'm going to share the video with you and then jeremy and i'll pick it up afterwards i'm not hearing the audio carolyn don't hear the audio Sorry, you don't hear the audio? No. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on two seconds. All right. Let me start over, you guys. You're such a good group of people. You are. <laughs> have no issues with starting over. All right. Ready? There it is. What a journey the Canadian Canoe Museum is on. We are building a brand new home for our one-of-a-kind collection of over 600 canoes, kayaks, and paddled watercraft. We are so close. We have an amazing new site on the water's edge in Peterborough. The construction of our beautiful new museum has already begun. And what a journey the Canadian Canoe Museum is on. We are building a brand new home for our one-of-a-kind collection of over 600 canoes, kayaks, and paddled watercraft. We are so close. We have an amazing new site on the water's edge in Peterborough. The construction of our beautiful new museum has already begun and development of our new exhibitions is well underway. We are standing in the heart of the Canadian Canoe Museum, surrounded by hundreds of canoes, kayaks, and paddled watercraft from across Canada and indeed around the world. This space is not normally open to the public, and this is where an incredible project is just getting underway. As you can imagine, moving a collection of this size is no small feat. If we gathered all of these vessels, and line them up nose to tail or bow to stern, they would stretch more than three kilometers long. A collection like this is an exquisite portrait of our relationship, ancient and enduring today, of our relationship to the environment and to its waters. Now, to prepare for this move, each object needs to be cleaned, documented, fitted with a pallet for transportation and storage, quarantined and inspected. And this is where you come in. By sponsoring the move of a canoe or a kayak or a paddle, you're not just moving an object, you're moving its stories and ensuring that the knowledge that it holds will be shared for generations to come. But what a gift that is. We are on our final portage to the water's edge. This is a unique opportunity for you to learn more and get involved in this incredible project. Help us move the collection. Visit canoemuseum.ca slash move to learn more and to sponsor a canoe, a kayak, or a paddle today. And there you go. There's the ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, this is... Um, this is such an exciting time in the Canoe Museum's history. And um, we're really excited to be sharing our project with you and watching it come to life. And I personally can't wait to opening day next year where many of you will be with us in person 
and we'll be able to open our doors to you and you'll be able to see this beautiful place that we're so proud of and it will become your home as much as it is our home right now. Mm. That's wonderful. Wow. I wish you all the very best. You know what? I think one thing that we didn't mention, Carolyn, I don't think I heard you mention it and I think people will be curious is how far we are along in the campaign. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we are actually, we're probably just a bit over 93% raised against our goal because there was a new gift that just came in uh, this morning. It was confirmed another $600,000 gift. Um, and so, yes, we are just over 93% uh, raised against our goal, and we've got less than a year to make up the difference, which we, are, of course, are going to do. Um, with your help. Yeah, with your help, folks <laughs> at WCHA. And honestly, this is, you know, we know that you are supporting this organization in visitation and membership and volunteerism and, and spreading the word. Um, and I hope that you can continue to do that and find your own way to support the organization because there are many, many different ways to support. So, you know how to find us. Um, I'm sure many of you have Jeremy's email. Send him a note about a boat. Um, <laughs> and you know how to find me. And, um, and hopefully it's too bad we can't do Q&A. But um, there it is. Uh, feel free to send any questions you've got to us. And we'd be happy to take some time and answer them. And really hoping all of you are well and that you have a great assembly. And sorry we can't be with you. But we'll see you next year. July 1st. That's our big opening. See you there. That's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. All right. Great take to care, be with everybody. you. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye.